Dear Esther, the morning after I was washed ashore, salt in my ears, sand in my mouth, and the waves always at my ankles, I felt as though everything had conspired to this one last shipwreck. I remembered nothing but water, stones in my belly and my shoes, threatening to drag me under to where only the most listless of creatures swim. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the ClismCast. My name is Mioni and today I'm going to be starting a new Let's Play series. This is a brand new game called Dear Esther. Um, this is made by The Chinese Room and Robert Briscoe. Uh, it got released on the 14th of February 2012, so that's pretty much yesterday for me. Um, I'm not sure when this video is going to be up, so it, it will be this week. So. so I thought I'd have a quick look at this game. Uh, apparently it got nominated for Excellent in Visual Art, Excellence in Audio uh, for various awards, and the NWOVO and Siemens and the Siemens McNally Grand Prize Awards by the Independent Games Festival. So, since this is a bit of an arty game, and it's extremely story driven, I thought it would be a really good practice for a real Let's Play, uh, unlike my <coughs> Magicka experience which I'm not I, I like the game it's just not, not my cup of tea for actually wanting to play hours of it on end so hopefully you might enjoy this and it will give you a brief explanation of what this game's all about um, whilst we go through this process and we'll learn together so this is a story driven game I'll try and be quiet as much as possible through cutscenes or, or whatever comes my way it's supposed to be comparable to amnesia that's like comparing bread and chicken, they taste nothing alike, you know. So I'm going to just judge it for what it is. The graphics are on the highest settings I can possibly put them, so hopefully it will look decent when we play it back. Apologies for my keyboard, it's very loud. So yeah, let's kick this off. So straight from the first cutscene, I'm already in what appears to be very nice. Oh my god, it's beautiful. So the controls aren't explained to you. W, A, S, and D moves. Water. Can you swim? No. You certainly cannot swim. I almost drowned. Let's see what other buttons do. Seems that I can't access those buttons if there is any at the moment. So, what's this all about? A boat? Yes, yes. Go in the house. Oh god. Ooh. Ooh, a searchlight. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Someone really needed to go, didn't they? And by the looks of it, quite a long time ago. The life at sea, eh? It's quite a pretty game already. Wow, I hope you can hear that in decent quality. Uh, seems to be a really nice effect so far. Looks like someone pooed in a sink. Ooh, a map. Can I... I don't know how I interact with things. The left, um, the left mouse button seems to just zoom in. It's a map of what appears to be Britain. Um, Great Britain. Which is groovy. A book titled... The Hebridean history, so we're in the Hebrides. Okay. Kettle. A door that you cannot go through. What am I even doing in here? Oh, musical notes. I'm sure if someone was clever they could uh, pause this video and try and figure out what the hell that was. That'd be pretty cool. I have no idea. I can't read sheet music. Ooh. H O H. What's this? What, what is this jazz? Alright. So, some random letters. I have a feeling I might need to remember these, but whatever. We can always come back. <coughs> Much to your dismay. Alright, so we've looked in here. What the fuck? Did I just fall over? Oh, he did say on the intro that he was injured, I think. So. 
more paint. Yes. Boiler. I've got to say, these sound effects are pretty damn cool already. Graphically, it looks rather cool. We got nominated for various art awards, so I would imagine that they put a lot of effort into it. I'd go down there, but I really. I'm going to stick to the path, okay? Hmm. There I am, walking through the Hebrides on this beautiful dusky day. That looks rather dangerous. Um, hopefully, I can wall jump around that. Doesn't seem to be a jump button, actually. Wall walk. Donnelly reported the legend of the hermit, a holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, in all that haunts the ocean, is the rubbish dumped from the tankers he'd find with more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. <laughs> the shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claimed to have seen him. I have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. So that's what they mean about story-driven uh, plot then. Looks like we're going in this horrible cave. There's another paint can, so I'm. Oh, hello. Some paintings. Oh, now, I've never played Amnesia. I was always too scared to uh, venture that far into scary games. I don't know what I'm letting myself in for here, but. I had to play it. It's. Uh, it's brand new and I, I want to know what it's about. So it doesn't seem like I can go through there actually. There doesn't seem to be a jump button or anything, so. He said he'd left the gifts at the mouth of the cave. And some dude died in here? Hmm. Just a scary hole. I'm overreacting. Never mind. That paint can is obviously something. Don't know if I'll be able to get up there. Oh, shit. Looks like we're going down here, guys. Mm, stroll on the beach, you know. Nice, relaxing. Stroll on the beach. Bit of driftwood. Wreckage from a tank, as he said. Like, unless a tanker had a shopping mall. Um, are these lobster nets? These are lobster nets or something, aren't they? I'm showing my ignorance here. Rope. Can't interact with anything. As of yet. So. Yes. That looks like a walkway. We'll head for that. I'm very tempted to check out these um, corners, though. There was once talk of a wind farm out here, away from the rage and the intolerance of the masses. The sea, they said, is too rough for the turbines to stand. They clearly never came here to experience the becalming for themselves. Personally, I would have supported it. Turbines would be a fitting contemporary refuge for a hermit. The revolution and the permanence. <laughs> Wind farms. I don't even know if I'm going the right way. But it's a way, so why not? I must say, it's got this very eerie feeling about it, and it's just a beach, but it's also very, very beautiful, so I'm quite liking this, actually. Oh, what the hell is this supposed to be? I'm sure that'll become really important to remember stuff. That looks like a mason's mark. Hmm. Yes, Freemasons, perhaps? I, I have no idea. The sound of the sea, I don't know if you can hear it on the quality of this recording, but it's beautiful. Yeah, I found myself to be as featureless as this ocean. 
as shallow and unoccupied as this bay, a listless wreck without identification. My rocks are these bones and a careful fence to keep the precipice at bay. Shot through me caves, my forehead a mount. This aerial will transmit into me so. All overexposed, the nervous system, where Donnelly's boots and yours and mine still trample. I will carry a torch for you. I will leave it at the foot of my headstone. You will need it for the tunnels that carry me under. Yeah, mention of a torch. So the guy died down here, I presume? Nice little rock walls. Headstone. Does he mean... Yes, he means this, doesn't he? A car door, randomly. Looks like he scavenged some stuff together. I could be completely wrong, actually. Headstone. So, I'm not sure what type of game this is. I know it's story-driven, but I'm not sure if it's a, a puzzle game or what. I don't think going in here would be a good idea. Right. We need to go back the other way and go up that walkway. Because there's obviously nothing down here. And if there is, I can't access it. So unless... Is that a corpse? No, that's a rock sand. <clears throat> my eyesight. If you don't know, I'm pretty terrible when it comes to seeing things. I have got good vision, I just can't comprehend things very well. I'm a bit of an idiot. There you go. Something for you to uh, enjoy. So, First comment is, your walking is ridiculously slow. I know that's probably due to your injury or, or whatever happened. Um, that he talked about that I've completely forgotten about again already. But, um, yeah. So let's go up there and see what's what. I don't know what headstone he was talking about now. I'd probably miss something, yeah. Because he mentioned a torch, so. I've checked his little cave. Whoever this bloke actually is, of course writing letters. It could be the guy I'm playing, actually. I could be really ignorant and not even understand the basics. So... Mm. Uh, just an unusual texture. Or is it just pieces of paper? Yeah, it's pieces of paper. Don't blame the looks of the game, Sam. So you can really see the lighthouse from here. Yeah. Looks like we're going up here. I want to know what that is in the distance. Is it some kind of um, radio tower or something? Well, it's probably a good place to head, I, I imagine. A wonderful sight. The moon cresting the junction between the cliff path and the stone circle. It cast a shadow of the ridge across the beach. All the world as if you had signed your name in untidy handwriting. Hmm. Huh. It does. I'm not going to fall down there and find out. <laughs> never look over cliffs, guys. Yeah, never look up over cliffs. I don't know if you get what I get. I get vertigo in games. It's a bit weird, actually. But thankfully, this game has a huge FOV option, so... And that sort of makes me feel a bit better. I get quite nauseous if um, I play a game with a low FOV. When someone had died or was dying or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice. They cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat, and know to send aid, or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. Infection is not simply of the flesh. Oh. So, some kind of crazy infection. I don't like where this is going, but we'll see. Alright. I've got to say, it's very realistic so far. In terms of looks, at least. 
Ah, stones, standing stones. Maybe that's his uh, his death bed where he died. Oh, seems the radio tower is quite a fair distance away, actually. This feels like trips to Cornwall when I was little, when we used to walk through paths like this over the moors. So, we are not like Lot's wife, you and I. We feel no particular need to turn back. There's nothing to be seen if we did. No tired old man parting the cliffs with his arms. No gifts or Bibles laid out on the sand for the taking. No tides turning or the shrieking gulls overhead. The bones of the hermit are no longer laid out for the taking. I have stolen them away to the guts of Gus Island, where the passages all run to black, and where we can light each other's faces by their strange luminescence. Right. So I'm going to be doing a lot of stop-start commentary on this because... Ooh, a boat. I've got ADD. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Lots of stop-start commentary because, well, I don't want to interrupt the story, and I, the one thing I find on Let's Plays that annoys me, the hell out of me actually, annoys the hell out of me, is people talking over cutscenes and uh, not really showing off the game, you know, that they're playing a game for the reason of showing it, you know. Dear Esther, I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. Quite a good little story. Great way of telling it, though. I'm not sure if you can relate to this. Uh, I know a lot of my viewers are Americans, so. But uh, it's certainly very gritty. Very folklory. Right. Now, my heartbeat has increased. And there. Oh my god. It was a horrible noise. If I would I... leave you presents outside your retreat in this interim space between cliff and beach. I would leave you loaves and fishes, but the fish stocks have been depleted and I've run out of bread. I would row you back to your homeland in a bottomless boat, but I fear we would both be driven mad by the chatter of the sea creatures. All right. So heartbeat, ominous sounds, freaky looking cave. Yeah. Paint again. Oh. Oh, the torchlight noise made me jump already. So there's a moon. There's another scribble. And those H's again. Is there anything I can. Just cans of paint everywhere. That's. Very weird. I think he did say he went mad, though. Is this... Socks. I found his socks. And, um... And bones. Socks and bones. Yeah. So this cave is, what, empty? Really? No. It's just teasing me now. Wow. Um, what was that? I heard something. Okay, get myself together. How was that? A oh, piece of a paint can. I'm just gonna jump at shadows all the time in this playthrough. Especially with these noises, they're so very loud. Yes. Ah, happy music. Ah, I could do with that actually. 
Why am I so scared already? This is exactly why I don't play ominous games. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna hate it. <laughs> uh, wow. Just... God, it is absolutely beautiful. Certainly, uh... Very, very pretty, this game. And this is an indie game. That's what gets me. This is an indie game. Wow. Just... That impresses the hell out of me. I, I don't care who you are. This is... I'm, I'm walking in the stream now. That's... That's good. I need to wet my feet. They're a bit warm. Don't know how to warm, Sam. But... He still maintains he wasn't drunk, but tired. I can't make the judgement or the distinction anymore. I was drunk when I landed here, and tired too. I walked up the cliff path in near darkness, and camped in the bay where the trawler lies beached. It was only at dawn that I saw the bothy, and decided to make my temporary lodgings there. I was expecting just the area, and a transmitter stashed in a weatherproof box somewhere on the mount. It had an air of uneasy permanence to it. Like all the other buildings here, erosion seems to have evaded it completely. Now, I'm not completely uneducated, but what the hell is a boffy? Yeah, I'll have to look that one up on the dictionary, I'm afraid. Yes. All bits of paper. There seems to be lots of newspaper. And standing stones. With paint on them. And a book. Also some chemistry. And what appears to be a bible? I'd be right in assuming that's a Bible, right? Or something. It's got a Templar symbol on it, though, so. That looks like a genetic code. Or a virus or something. So essentially, this is another survival horror situation, is it? Hmm. Well, I'd like to go that way, but since it's kind of free roamy, I'm going this way. Yeah. Yeah. My god. Just wish my character actually moved a bit faster. This is slow. This is going to be a very, very slow playthrough, that's for sure. I'm not sure, actually. If I should cut things out, leave a comment below if you'd like me to cut a lot of this running around nonsense. Um, that'd probably save time, but it'd probably break the immersion for you. Me talking will break the immersion, actually, so... Oh. One-way trip, guys. See you later. Ah. Loading screens. Dear Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimetre using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. Okay. Let's, uh, is it just me or is it getting darker? Ooh. A crashed tanker, I believe. Well, we've got to go and investigate that, surely. Is that a man? What is that? I saw a man or something. Could be just a fence post, but. Hmm. Tanker first. Man second. This is really, really beautifully done. That reminds me of Norfolk, actually. A place in Norfolk where you can walk onto the beach and you've got slats just like that all the way up to the beach. So you have to go over dunes to get to it. And these fences. Why am I talking about fences? Ugh, I'm going to get lost in artistic amazement. I'm going to stick to the path. I don't trust this game. No, not one bit. It's a bit overgrown. 
There's a man. Did you see that? Yes. There is a man or a creature of something walking over there. And he's disappeared. Hmm. I'm not alone. Right. He's still there. That's freaking me out. Now he's disappeared. He's there. He's disappeared. It's a draw distance. It was definitely a man. He moved. Right. Well, guys, I know you're in massive anticipation to see what happens next, and so am I, actually. I will be doing these videos regularly. I'm already enjoying this, um, simply for an aesthetic view and something calming to play. <laughs> I say calming, but this, uh, this will probably make me shit my knickers after a few episodes. So be sure to enjoy that. If you like this video and like the way I'm doing it, if, uh, if you think I should change anything, if I should cut out a lot of the walking between areas and just focus on the story, then leave a comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching, my name's been Mioni and this has been Dear Esther. See you next time.